Hey everyone, this is Ryan Williamson, Lucom SGA President OMS2, uh, and today I'm going to talk to us just about dealing with failure. The current culture only ever talks about success and celebrating your success, and no one ever takes the time to discuss what happens when things don't go our way. And as medical students, I've found that every single one of us, right, we, we want to be the best. We want to be the smartest person in the room, or we want to get the highest test scores, or we want to get the best sports scores, best residency, best seat. But ultimately, sometimes, no matter how hard we work, things aren't going to go our way. And that's, that's an almost part of life. Failure is part of life. And all of us to get where we are have had lots of success. But, even with all that success, there's going to be failure at some point. And some of us have dealt with that a lot in the past. Some might have never had to deal with that. But I think it's important to talk about how we do that gracefully as physician leaders. Because right now, I think what we're seeing is an entire culture focus is only on the highs, right? That's what social media does. Best day of my life, everything's good. That's it. But there's no there's no hand in a rough spot or you know, I, I'm genuinely unhappy with what I'm doing. So my thought and encouragement for everyone at this conference today was to take a moment to realize all the achievements that they've gone through, a lot of the failures they probably felt through, but also change the narrative and perspective about how we do with failure moving forward. And to do that I'd like to just open up a little bit and talk about how my failures in the past have gotten me here. In a situation I never thought that would have been possible. Like most of you, I knew I wanted to be a doctor for a long time, but I didn't even know <laughs> what deals were. Right when I was in college, my my pre med advisor told me straight up they weren't real docs, and which I'm like offended now, viscerally, but at the time, whatever. And that first application cycle didn't happen. I knew that's all I wanted to do. I could either go. I'd been a trainer for a while. I could go work in fitness, or I could stay trying to work this out. Like I figured, I have to. I have to try. Like, I know this is something I want to do. I wanted to do it since I was 14 years old. Like, I can't give up on this, right? So, what do we do as hard workers who get told no? We double down, right? So, I went to grad school. I, I got a master's in nine months full of time to scribe. And it was, it, it was brutal, right? Like, I, if I wasn't in a clinic, I was studying. If I wasn't studying, I was doing a night shift at the ED. I got to work around all these different experiences. But ultimately, I got to see all different facets of medicine and let me know this is what I want to do. But I still didn't get in that second time. And now you're telling someone who's been very fortunate to have a lot of success in his life, you know, growing up with a lot of sports, did well in that, college did well in that, and now twice now, okay, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Where do you go from there, right? And that's when I realized, okay, well, if this is what we want to do, if this is a life we're going to dedicate ourselves to, we can't let those failures keep us from moving forward, right? So that third time, that was the time I tried to use. I'll be the first to tell you my pride before. I didn't know. I didn't understand the difference. But in that second gap year, when I was able to work with um, different sports med docs, one of which was a DL, which is non-surgical um, sports med trained, and seeing her impact the lives of individuals without having to use copious amounts of pain, man pain medication management because she was doing HBLA, muscle injury, that means that I now have some semblance of knowledge, right? But it was incredible. And when I tried that time, it was a workout, and I got to come to a school that I enjoyed being at. It has its struggles, and I'm, I'm dealing with failure every day, working with, you know, trying to make things a change at the administration level and all that. But it's an opportunity that I've been given, that we've all been given, that all of you have been given, to become a doctor. Only what it comes down to is those failures that we get, that at first might feel daunting. Right? You didn't get into your school, or your, the residency, your top choice didn't work out. I'm here to tell you right now, I'm with the proof, that if you put your nose to the grindstone, keep pushing forward, no matter how many times that you're stepped back. Ultimately, it will get you to a place that is better than you could have ever imagined. There are so many times in this journey, just, to, just as medical students, where we could, we could quit, call it up. You want to go hang out with your friends, but you're sitting there doing eight hours of flashcards, or you're watching a whole other segment of the board's event, but regardless, or you're on the clinic all weekend, but the alternative of not fulfilling that dream, it's unacceptable for all of us. There will be failures in our life, in our future. And how we respond to that is what's going to make us the best physician, but also just the best people we can be. Take it in grace. Take the pride hit that comes with it, but keep moving forward. Because that will get to where you need to be. I'm so grateful to work with all of you. I'm so grateful to get to know you guys better throughout this conference. And I look forward to interacting with you all the rest of this weekend. Thank you.